Hello and welcome to Feminine Success, the place that women go to become powerfully feminine. I am Candice Onida. This week I'm going to talk to you about the three keys for how to soften into your feminine. Today's video is based on, at least in part, by a question asked by a subscriber. Elaine Montreux asks, or shares, thanks a lot for sharing your light. Perhaps a video you could do is on something I am exploring, which is changing, softening the voice as a way to become more feminine. This is working for me. I subscribe. Looking forward to your new vids. It's a great question, Elaine, and I'm going to put it in the context of these three keys. It's going to be one of the keys for how to soften into your feminine. Now, the reason why I'm answering this question for Elaine is many of my subscribers ask similar questions to this. That is how to be soft, but also strong, how to actually be vulnerable, how to feel different, but also feel powerful, right? Now, an important part of softening, which by the way, is a very feminine thing in and of itself. The feminine is about softening, about yielding to the masculine, which is about penetration and intensity, right? And so softening in this context can also be viewed as a way to open. And so we want to look at different ways to soften different ways to open and what that leads to. Okay. So the first key is to soften the body. Now this is so important and you know that I speak a lot about embodiment. So softening the body is different than tightening up or hardening the body. Duh. I'm going to say that's very obvious, but let's use the example. If you're going on a date, mm. I'm not soft if I'm doing that, right? My body dynamics are closed. My body language is closed and I'm probably a bit sort of uh, tightened up, right? So what does it mean to do the opposite, to soften the body, to open the body, to feel, oh, what does it do? What do I have to do to let things start to flow in my body, to move, to yield? What does it mean, mean to yield? Now, again, we could use the dating scenario that could be by being a little bit more sort of playful or using a bit more gesticulation, uh, being soft with the hands, soft with the way you move the body. Now I'm sitting here in front of a microphone, so I can't do the queen walk. I talk, I talk about, um, I do a queen walk in my live powerfully feminine intensives, but I think you're getting the idea. So this is about how, can I move my body in a way that is more like water and less like stone, <laughs> right? So how do we bring this fluid element into the body and how can that let me yield and create a space that is softer and more open? Now, what this leads to and why this is important is uh, life, the masculine cash flow, whatever can come into you if you're creating space for it. Now, all of the things we're going to talk about that, all of these softenings are things that will do that for you. But we're talking about now, how do we do that in the, in the body so that we create literally this open vessel into which things come into which the masculine pen can penetrate into which the flow of life can pour its bounty into you. Okay. Now the second key, is how to soften the voice. Now this directly answers Elaine's question. I know for myself that when I'm under stress, duress or anxious, that something come, becomes a bit kind of crunchy or hard or desperate tight in my voice, right? I'm using that to illustrate now. So what does it mean to take this concept of softening and put it into our voice? like I was talking about before with the body, how can I create yielding flow, the water element fluidity in my voice? How can I do that? And it's a practice thing. Okay. If you've been used to sort of being in the directive and the 
you know, this is how I use my voice and I'm telling you what to do. And it comes with a pointed kind of closing or demand or fight, which as we know is the lower masculine, the man mode. Oh, okay, what do I do to change that? And to be effective in my communication, even though I may have dropped my tone a little bit, I may have brought more water, more softness, more fluidity into my voice stream. Okay, so voice stream is an important element I speak about with my women, the stream of the voice. And importantly about voice stream, it's where is it coming from? Okay. So if you look at a stream that comes down a mountain, it starts somewhere. It starts somewhere up the top of the mountain and then it flows down the mountain. So what I'm talking about here is what is your voice connected to? Now, we can play with this a lot and I love playing with this. So right now, I'm going to suggest that you try this. Let's say something and you can pause the video and you're going to connect your voice stream to your heart. And whilst you do that, you're going to feel this sort of opening in the throat chakra. You're going to open the voice and connect it to the heart. And clearly, if you're speaking like that to somebody, it's going to land differently on them from the source. Okay, the source being the heart. It flows like a stream through the voice and then it lands differently, right? Let's try another exercise. Let's go down into the pussy. Let's connect into the lower centers. And now I'm going to connect my voice to my pussy as I speak. Now the stream that comes from there is a little bit different, right? Often when you connect from a part of yourself, it connects to the other person, <laughs> right? So when I'm connecting to my pussy, I'm kind of talking to yours or I'm talking to your lower belly, to your lower centers, to the dark hidden depths there, whether you're a man or a woman listening to this, okay? So voice stream, firstly, what's it connected to? Allow it space to flow through the voice and then let it land pointedly where you'd like it to land. So that is a fun exercise. Now, the reason for this is the efficacy of your communication will go up a lot, as in you're going to have way more efficient, direct, clear communication when you know what you're connected to and what you are past, uh, directing it toward. Okay, so it could be directing toward an intent. It can be directing toward an energetic center, right? voice stream such a powerful concept and key number three is how to soften the mind now i said at the beginning of this that we're talking here about how to use softening as a way to open so i'm also talking about how to have an open mind and what does that really mean right and why do you want to have an open mind well it's kind of boring going through life knowing everything is definitely the way that you think it is. <laughs> and a lot of the time it's actually not true. So open mindedness is a way in which we allow ourselves to consider other views, other points of view, other opinions, other ways of seeing things. Now, this is not about whether it's right or wrong. This is about creating a certain space of fluidity again, of softening that allows you to become broader in the way that you see things, the way that you see life, the way that you see this person in front of you. Okay, I'm using that as an example. So you're in a communication, you're pretty sure that you know what's going on and what's happening here, and it could be like an altercation. What if you weren't right? What if the premises from which you understood the situation were totally incorrect, totally erroneous. And you had stuck your stake in the ground and you believed that this was so. Well, what if you allowed space for that person to actually open your mind, soften your mind and allow you to see the broader perspective of things that you may not previously have known? What this will lead to is firstly, suddenly the world looks different. Suddenly you have this opportunity to see things through different people's eyes. I always loved the book To Kill a Mockingbird. 
if if I remember rightly, and that was way back in my school days, one of the key, key, key teachings of To Kill a Mockingbird was to, what is it like to put on somebody else's shoes? What's it like to see life through somebody else's eyes, through somebody else's experience? And I thought it was a very beautiful spiritual teaching that came through that book. Very sad too, but very, very powerful. The three keys, I'll go over them again, is to soften the body first, like create fluidity and softness in the body. And that includes the breath, okay? We need to use the breath there. The second key is softening the voice and knowing what the voice stream is connected to. Is it the heart? Is it the belly? Is it the whole body? Is it some cool idea in the mind? Or is your voice connected to a sense of spiritual flow, spiritual knowledge, spiritual know-how? And the third key is to soften the mind, to create space of opening to other people's way of seeing things, other opinions, and maybe more information that you didn't previously know. So I hope you enjoyed the video this week uh, on the three keys to how to bring softening and how to use that to be more feminine. What I'd love you to do this week is I'd love you to put your comments below on your experiences of the three keys, the three types of softening, and tell us the experiences you are having with the different types of softening and how that is affecting communication, life, and your experience. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd love you to subscribe over here. I do publish every single Sunday and Remember, when you have the courage to go out there and shine, you give others permission to do the same. So let's go out there and shine this week. Bye-bye for now.